Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And before we start the last installment on the book, uh, Dr. Campbell's book, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition, just a couple of announcements. Fall semester starts in just a couple of weeks, so it is time to register Fall Conference, November 8th through 10th. And Dr. Campbell will be with us to talk about this amazing book. And on um, September 5th is the next um, episode of Introduction to Plant-Based Nutrition and Health to, uh, via teleconference. If you haven't taken this 90-minute class on how to adopt and maintain a plant-based diet, I strongly urge you to do it. So anyway, picking up the discussion where we left off, this is again the last installment on this most amazing book that I hope you will all be inspired to read. Campbell says that government is complicit, and I think we all know this, in this disastrous healthcare system with a combination of lobbying, and then there's the revolving door where people work for the government, and then they go to work for private industry and powerful special interests. The healthcare debate always ends up focusing on the same thing, which is who's going to pay the bill, rather than why is the bill so high while the results are so disappointing. The setting of ridiculously high minimum daily intakes of a few nutrients, which the government does, encourages consumption of animal foods and supplements, and government agencies like the Centers for Disease Control publish misinformation of, about all kinds of issues, ranging from the true causes of death to the side effects of vaccines and, and the real causes of, of disease and health issues. Even the National Institutes of Health is not exempt from the corruption and adherence from the party line. Again, Campbell cites his own experience. As a member of a grant review panel for the NIH, the title of a presentation made to the panel was changed from nutrition and cancer to metabolic pathology. When he inquired as to why the term nutrition couldn't be included in the title, he was told that if he continued to bring this kind of stuff up, he'd be sent back to Cornell. Reductionism wins every time. Campbell doesn't avoid taking on professional organizations like the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and groups like the American Cancer Society stating that, and I'll try to get this right, this is his quote, these wolves clothe themselves in a sheepskin of selfless service and misrepresent their true intentions. The groups get their funding from drug companies, food companies, and other special interests, and they're more interested in protecting their power and turf than in helping people. Disease groups want the power to set standards for care, and professional groups control qualifications for memberships. Neither type, like anybody or any group that challenges their worldview, and they've all established clear parameters determining who is and who is not a legitimate practitioner and who is a quack. One of the worst organizations is the American Cancer Society, an organization Campbell clearly despises, and he has very good reason for feeling the way he does. With the exception of its campaign against tobacco use, the ACS has done nothing useful and much that's harmful. It continues to promote mammography in spite of the evidence that it hurts more women than it helps, um, doesn't reduce the risk of dying of breast cancer. It promotes drug treatments for cancer that are often useless, takes sponsorship money from anybody who will give it, including people who sell foods, companies who sell foods that um, are clearly cancer promoting, like Wendy's and McDonald's. Um, it is the, its dietary recommendations, if followed, will almost ensure that somebody's risk of cancer will be increased. The group also funds vicious attacks on anybody that dares to advocate other than that which is recommended by the ACS, including those who promote a plant-based diet. Again, Campbell draws on personal experience. One of the reasons he doesn't like the ACS is they launched a smear campaign against him due to his stance on diet and cancer in the 1980s. And those of you who read the China study might remember that he had some information about that whole episode in that book too. He includes a section about the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, formerly known as the American Dietetic Association, detailing the corporate sponsorships from food companies and the group's desire to control the practice of nutrition. My own battle with the Ohio Board of Dietetics, along with some excerpts from a very interesting slide presentation, uh, are included in the book. And the slide presentation was delivered at an A&D conference by Kay Mavco, who was head of the Ohio Board of Dietetics when they were coming after me. And the slide presentation was teaching, it was instructions on how to um, have dietitians turn in non-dietitians to state licensure boards so that they could be investigated. Um, he points out, Campbell points out, that while the A&D doesn't consider me to be a legitimate source of nutrition information, they have no problem with education uh, that is offered by Abbott Labs, Aramark, Coca-Cola, General Mills, ConAgra, and many other industry-related groups and sanctioned by the Committee on Dietetic Registration. 
Additionally, the group contributes to political candidates, which Campbell says is another way for industry sponsors to reach elected officials. He calls the AND, quote, a front for the food and drug industries and their interests, end of quote. And he's not the only person that's made that uh, allegation about the um, AND. Campbell summarizes this section of the book by stating that industry influences into institutions that are supposed to help Americans become healthier. And while this is all going on, Americans have completely abdicated responsibility for their own health outcomes. The nonprofits tell us that the only hope for our survival, really, is to march, run, wear pink ribbons, and other such nonsense. And he uses those terms. To kind of summarize, Hull gives readers an amazing and detailed look at how our entire system degenerated, and it has been a long and consistent degeneration into its current condition, and how powerful those who control it really are. Ever the optimist, Campbell agrees with me that there's hope that this can and will change, and that the change starts with each person who decides to eat differently. Almost everyone who adopts a well-structured plant-based diet experiences health improvement, which leads to a shift in thinking about the meaning of health. And at some point as the numbers grow, this will put a lot of pressure on the system to change policies. And his closing line says it all. It's time for us to begin a real revolution, one that begins by challenging our individual beliefs and changing our diets and ends with the transformation of our society as a whole. So again, my, uh, my motivation for sharing all this information is if you don't read the book, I know you'll know enough about it, you can talk about it. I hope I've motivated you to read this really amazing book. Glad I read it again. All right, that's all for now. I'll be back with you on Thursday. And as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would be interested in watching it. Have a great day.